and welcome on this St. Valentine's Day to worship at Roberts Park United Methodist Church here in downtown Indianapolis. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Pastor Andrew, and it's my pleasure to share, with worship, in, share in worship with you all today. Wherever you are participating in our worship from online, it is our prayer that today you will be encouraged in your service to the community around you, and strengthened in your faith to face the issues of today. I'm delighted that Pastor Carmen will give our sermon today, and we look forward to hearing her later in the service. But first, as we gather this day, let us be reminded of our work and witness as together we read the mission statement of Roberts Park. We are the heart of downtown. Inspired by Jesus Christ, we live out our faith by serving with compassion practicing social justice, nurturing meaningful relationships, and welcoming all who seek to experience and share Christ's love. Lang Brownlee is our liturgist today. Good morning. Please join me in today's call to worship. Beyond our busyness, above the cold winter floor, there is a glory rising born of heaven and reaching out to each one of us a light that shines through the clouds, an invitation seeking all of who we are that transfigures the world, that transforms darkness into hope, that brings life from a cross where old life ends and new life is born. In glory, Jesus meets us here, raising us from depths of valley to the height of the mountain, carrying the weight of our humanity to the heights of heaven's glory. Let us worship from the mountain and hear again, this is my son, my chosen, listen to him.
we turn to the prayer of approach. We worship you, O God, with songs of praise. We worship you with words of prayer and with ears that listen for you to speak your saving truth into our lives. Amen. The lesson from the early church comes from Paul's second letter to the church at Corinth, 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 3 through 6. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. want to say a special hello to all the children from Roberts Park and the garden. We are going on an amazing adventure together as we get ready for the mystery of Easter. Do you remember how we prepared our hearts for Jesus to be born on Christmas? We called that Advent. And today we are getting ready to begin getting ready for Easter. And this is called Lent. It's the 40 days plus six days before Easter. Lent means to lengthen. As we get closer and closer to spring and to Easter, the days get longer because we have more sunlight. We are going on this trip together through Lent using our activity kits. If you don't have a Lent activity kit, tell a grown up in your house to call the church and we'll get you one. Let me tell you a little bit about the kit. First of all, you'll need to get out your brown bag, your electric candle, and your crowns. The brown bag represents sackcloth, 
Sackcloth is something that people used to wear in the Bible when they were sad. We're going to use this today as our altar cloth. If you want, you can use your crowns to draw a cross on the bag, or you can decorate it any way you want. Make it your own special altar cloth. Next, turn on your electric candle and place it on your bag. Now you have your own altar for Lent. Inside the bag, you'll find an activity booklet with fun games and puzzles and a special activity for each week during Lent. You can turn your candle on and remember that Jesus is with you when you pray or do your weekly activities. There are also little notes in your kit labeled weeks one through seven. Each week on Sunday, we'll open a new note and learn something new about Jesus as we get closer and closer to Easter. But today we're gonna to talk about Ash Wednesday. It's the first day of Lent and we have a very special service for it. We take last year's palm leaves and burn them to make ashes. You see, all living things come from the same stuff. And on Ash Wednesday, we put ashes on our foreheads or our hands to remember that we and all things are made of the same dust. This year for Ash Wednesday, we're gonna use temporary tattoos and you'll find that in your activity bag as well. It looks like this. And what you'll wanna do is peel off the plastic, get the tattoo wet, put it on your hand, rub it on real good, and then peel it off. Now you're all ready for Ash Wednesday and you can show the grown-ups in your house how to put on their temporary tattoo. I am so happy that we are all going to be doing these activities together. I can't wait to hear about what you're learning during Lent and see the pictures of all the fun you're having. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, Help us prepare our hearts, minds, and bodies for the season of Lent, knowing that the joy of Easter is not far away. Amen. Hear these words from the Gospel according to St. Mark from the ninth chapter and reading from verse 2. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, and led them up the high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came from the cloud, This is my beloved son, listen to him. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them, but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.
Amanda Gorman shot to stardom overnight. She is the youngest inaugural poet in U.S. history, as well as an award-winning writer and cum laude graduate of Harvard University, where she studied sociology. No stranger to the White House or large audiences, her performance of the poem she wrote, The Hill We Climb, at the inauguration of President Biden made her an instant celebrity and household name. Her two books on Amazon sold out immediately and she appeared on numerous talk shows. Stickers, t-shirts, coffee mugs, and posters popped up in Etsy shops and on Amazon with the last three lines from her poem, The Hill, we climb. For there is always light. If only we're brave enough to see it. If only we're brave enough to be it. 
This poem reminds me of a song by one of my favorite bands, The Grateful Dead. The song is called The Scarlet Begonias. And the line is, once in a while you get shown the light in the strangest of places if you look at it right. And today on Transfiguration Sunday, we're going to talk about this light and our call to be the light. Are you brave enough? Would you pray with me? God of all creation, transform our lives in Christ's image. Write your law of love on our hearts and make us prophets of your glory that we may lead others into your presence. Prepare our hearts and minds for the message we are about ready to receive. Amen. While preparing for this week's sermon, I read that it's not the task of the preacher to explain transfiguration. Thanks be to God for that. The transfiguration has always been a puzzle to the church. It's one of those mysterious and mystifying stories that quite frankly, generally raises more questions than it does answers. Perhaps this is why I've heard so many messages that skip over the actual transfiguration and instead focus on the return down the mountain. The gist of these messages was that while the mountain experiences, these high highs in our relationship with Jesus are amazing and invigorating, but they're also fleeting. Their aim is to replenish us so that we can go back down the mountain and get to work. There's nothing wrong with this message. It's true and it's wise, but it's not the full story. You see, there will always be more to Jesus than we can know or figure out. And that's a good thing. So instead of focusing on the one clear message, let's take a look at the mystery and wonder that can still take our breath away and leave us in awe of the fullness of the Christ we worship. Jesus took Peter and James and John with him to the top of the mountain. Immediately, he was transfigured. He was changed before them. His clothes were white as snow and there was bright light surrounding him. Then there were those other guys. Mark tells us that it was Moses and Elijah, but how did he know that? How did the disciples know that? Maybe Moses had his famous staff he used to part the sea and strike the rock to get water. And maybe Elijah had his wilderness clothes on looking like he just came from a John the Baptist lookalike contest. We don't know and there's not a lot of attention given because it's not about them. They were in supporting roles this day. They represent the law and the prophets, the story of the people of God. They were there to draw attention to the one who was the word of God, who was the presence of God, who is Emmanuel, God with us. And what did they see? Something nearly indescribable, but let's not get too, hard, too far ahead of ourselves. Before having time to properly assess the situation, Peter, being Peter, blurts out, let's build three tabernacles, one for each of you. Now, a tabernacle is a meeting place for worship. And a lot of people like to give Peter a hard time for being too rash or too impetuous, speaking up too quickly or leaping before he looks. Even Mark says that Peter said these things because he was afraid. Granted, I have no doubt that the disciples were terrified, but I submit to you today that Mark got it wrong and that Peter did not speak out of fear, although he was certainly afraid. What you need to understand is that in ancient Israel, worship spaces traditionally had three parts. In wealthy homes, they would use imagery and iconography to create their worship spaces, which would include a mountain or a high place, a garden, and a tabernacle. 
These three parts also correspond with the temple in Jerusalem. So I believe that when Peter saw Jesus transfigured and saw Moses and Elijah, who represented the law and the prophets, that he wanted to worship. They were on a mountain. They came from a garden. The only thing missing was the tabernacle, the place of worship. Peter was viewing the situation from his own limited human understanding, and I think he should be given a little credit to have his wits about him enough to even think about the law at that moment. But then, but then, there was a voice. A voice announcing to all who have ears to hear that this is indeed the very Son of God and that it would be in our best interest to listen to him. Following Jesus means in the first place, listening. This is very similar to a previous utterance at Jesus' baptism when the voice said, you are my son, my beloved, with you I am well pleased. And now the voice says, this is my son, the beloved, Listen to him. The first words are directed at the one being baptized, the one launching a ministry and a hope. These mountaintop words are to those who seek to follow Jesus, to the disciples, and to us. Listen to him. Listen to the beloved son. Listen to the changed one, the revealed one. Pay attention. You see, Peter made the same mistake that many of us do. He reverted back to his old thinking and the old laws because they were familiar, comfortable, and safe. Peter was leaning on his own understanding of the law and the prophets, not on the teaching of his rabbi. And the response, a booming voice from heaven. What happened on that mountain was not so much a change into something different, but a revealing of the essence of the one who was changed. Jesus was the same when he went up the mountain as when he came back down. He is, after all, always who he is. He is always present in the fullness of his being. We can only see a part of him, the part of him we need at any given moment. We experience only a piece, a dimension of the reality that is Christ. And we get used to that. It becomes familiar to us. And then, before we know it, we have diminished the wonder of Christ. We have reduced God to something that we can grasp simply because it makes us feel safe and comfortable and better about ourselves. At the center of our choosing and our thinking and our doing is the person of Christ. Christ who guides us, Christ who directs us, Christ who loves and redeems us, and Christ who supports and strengthens us. This experience of worship is an unashamed celebration of Jesus who was revealed on the top of the Mount of Transfiguration as the fullness that we need. He steps into the role of the light of the world. Like the three disciples in that moment, we don't always know what to do with it or how to respond, but we know we want it. We want to dwell in it. We want that light to remove all the darkness from our lives. So let us celebrate the light, let us follow the light, and let us embrace the light. As Amanda Gorman said, be the light. Another one of my favorite bands is the Allman Brothers Band, and they have a song that's called Soul Shine. And I want to quote you just a few lines from it. It says, when you can't find the light, that guide you through a cloudy day. When the stars ain't shining bright 
and you feel like you've lost your way. When the candle lights of home burn so very far away, you gotta let your soul shine, shine till the break of day. When we are the light in the world, we are letting our soul shine. We are letting the essence of Christ and the Holy Spirit and God's work in our life shine out into the world. Last Sunday, Amanda Gorman wrote and performed a very touching and special tribute to the essential workers of the pandemic, including the three honorary captains of the COVID pandemic for the Super Bowl. An educator, an ICU nurse, a manager, and a veteran. She says at the end of her poem, defining the frontline heroes, risking their lives for our own. Let us walk with these warriors, charge on with these champions and carry forth the call of our captains. We celebrate them by acting with courage and compassion, by doing what is right and just. For while we honor them today, it is they who every day honor us. It is my prayer that we, will be, that we will be brave enough, bold enough, audacious enough to be the light, to let our souls shine, to listen what Je to what Jesus says as God commanded, and to follow the prompting of the Holy Spirit so that we may walk alongside these warriors and the brokenhearted, so that we may help to manifest God's kingdom here on earth. Let us be brave and let us be the light. Would you pray with me? O oh God of the covenant, the cloud of your splendor and the fire of your love revealed your son on the mountain heights. Transform our lives in his image. Write your law of love on our hearts and make us prophets of your glory that we may lead others into your presence. Amen. <laughs>
May all who are suffering sense your love and comfort and be given strength to persevere and peace of mind and spirit. Let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Loving God, we commend to your eternal presence those who have recently died, that they may rest in peace and rise in glory. Let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Loving God, thank you for providing always the encouragement and inspiration we need for the work you would have us do. Give us the grace to trust your will for us and walk forward boldly in your company. Merciful God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
And so as we move to the close of our time together in worship, again, I would ask church members and friends to let us know in the comments section of your presence with us and how many are watching with you. Can I remind you that you can continue giving to the church ministries online through the website using the giving tab or by posting your contribution check to the church office. If you're not a member of the church and are a regular viewer of our services, or if you have found us for the very first time today, then please do let us know how we can get in touch with you, as we have a small gift that we'd like to send you as a welcome to our congregation. You can email the church office at rpoffice at robertsparkumc.org, and we'll add you to our midweek mailing. I would also encourage you to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our church YouTube channel. I hope you've read the emails about our Lent and Easter preparation that starts this coming Wednesday with Ash Wednesday. We've put together a little Lent activity kit to help us navigate Lent and Holy Week. Bearing in mind what I shared earlier about people wanting to be together, there's also a very short five-question yes-no answer survey and we're inviting you to complete it. It's specifically about meeting together on Easter morning for a 10.30 service here in the sanctuary. Your input is really needed for us to make our final plans for Easter Sunday. So please go ahead and complete the survey. There'll be a link to that survey in our Facebook and YouTube information. So thank you in anticipation of completing the survey. And now I'm going to ask Pastor Carmen to offer a dismissal and our benediction. Now go and speak of what you have seen of God's glory. As the Lord lives, listen to Christ and follow him from the places of revelation to the places of mission. And may God shine, shine the light of glory into your hearts. May Christ be with you and never leave you. And may the Spirit renew the image of God within you. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. <laughs>